Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Fallen London. We are currently in the Garden Embassy exploring. Well, we did the exploring in the last episode. Now it's time to actually join in with the festivities. So I think we're going to start by joining the dancing. There's enough space for a promenade. You merely need to choose your partner and surely you'll command the attention of the ball. Ah, nobody is here. <laughs> Well, crap. I guess we need to introduce ourselves to some of these people. In this glittering throng, you have a dizzying array of potential partners to choose from. The crowd of guests flit to and from the floor from song to song as their dance cards dictate. The decorated ambassador seems to pay special attention to the most confident dancers as they each grace the floor for their favourite styles. Hmm, okay. Shall we approach the Admiralty? Because they like the way we're dressed, so it kind of makes sense. Let's go see what they want. The Gregacious Engineer claps you on the shoulder. They put a drink in your hands. The Dark Speckled Admiral gives you a curt nod. The Dark Speckled Ad Admiral holds court, surrounded by various immaculately suited underlings. The Gregarious Engineer merely listens, a glass of wine in each hand. Should we have a speak to the Gregacious Engineer? They put down a wine glass to take some snuff and laugh at a rather bawdy joke. You attract their attention and they grab you by the arm to drag you into the conversation that they are already dominating. They introduce you to some functionaries without ever mentioning their name. Hmm, this seems interesting. The Gregacious Engineer is flushed with drink. They seem in their natural element here. The jokes and passing observations don't make sense. There's another layer of meaning here that you'll need to crack. Well, luckily we have the ability, the watchful ability to crack this. An acceptable antidote. No. Anecdote. Ha ha, there you go. I can say it. My brain catches it. You decipher the conversation as best you can. You deploy a well-tested anecdote that follows the general theme but with a twist to fit the concealed undercurrent. The laughter, in response, is genuine. The regagacious engineer seems to regard you in a new light. You gained his approval. I guess we will... Uh, turn away, there's nothing else we can do. The regagacious engineer takes a moment to finish one of their drinks. Let's speak with the dark speckled admiral. He is delivering instructions to a nervous looking lieutenant. He dismisses the lieutenant and turns his smoked lenses towards you. This certainly is an event, isn't it? The Dark Speckled Admiral is not a skilled conversationalist, but he has the social graces to compliment your attire. It seems a great many things at the ball can be deemed quite good. We have nothing to talk to because we apparently don't have the air of confidence or mystery about us. I have to keep this in mind. While we're exploring, see if we can get these. Uh, outshine the brass. These people admire the proud, the bold, and the brightly coloured. Well, I did wonder what the uh, brass polish was for. You buff your buttons with your sleeve and return to the conversation gleaming. The officers around you applaud. <laughs> oh, I love that. Yes, yes, look at those shiny buttons. Lovely, lovely. Step away, we have other things to attend to. Ah, uh, shall we? Talk to the decorated ambassador. She seems to be the main person of this ball, so it makes sense. She's in the middle of conversation, but surely she can make time for you. A gaggle of aristocrats hover around the decorated ambassador. You interject with a brilliant anecdote. But a cut off. The ambassador is introduced to someone she simply must meet by a terrifying dowager. An aristocrat turns to you with a waxen sympathies. I'm sorry, she's very busy. Okay, so let's see if we can warm some more people here. Let's make some introductions. Several guests are milling around awkwardly. No one is attending to the situation. You make your way from client, quiet click to awkward gaggle and collect isolated individuals into your gravitational sphere. 
you introduce artists to potential patrons and clerics to aristocrats seeking redemption. Everyone is thankful to have someone start the conversation. Those at the ball admire your confident disposition. Ah, is that an air of confidence, I may say? We can tell some tall tales. Maybe they happened to you, maybe they didn't. What matters is that people pay attention. You retire to a corner to drink by yourself and look ornery. Before long, someone well-meaning comes to start a conversation. With only a little prodding, you open up about some of the more dramatic events from your, at least, someone's personal history. The rapt attention of one audience member attracts another, then a third. Your gently veiled history of torment and anguish is soon the talk of the ball. Well, now we have those, I think we can approach the Admiralty again. Let's see if we can speak to the Regacious Engineer first. Discuss treachery, here we go. Beneath the laughter and gossip, there are heavier implica implications. I am tripping all over my words today, I do apologise. Making friends. You are, the Engineer takes you aside. My apologies for not giving you a greater share of my attention. I have responsibilities competing for my attention. My work for the Admiralty, maintaining my wide network of friends. This evening might present an opportunity to expand that network. They turn their back to the Admiral. These new friends might not be favoured by the Admiralty. They might even be labelled revolutionaries by some. But they could prove valuable acquaintances. You have heard that the Gregacious Engineer is seeking connections with surface revolutionaries. Ooh. Now, there was something for the Dark Speckled Admiral, was there not? Did we lose our air of confidence? I believe we did. Can we get it again? Yes. Okay, let's approach back. Aha. So. Oh, hello. We can mention the Gregacious Engineer's revolutionary interests. The Admiral would likely be interested to hear that the Intelligence Officer is working multiple fronts. But if he's the Intelligence Officer, surely that's his job. Hmm. Let's discuss politics. He may be more comfortable discussing more familiar terrain. The conversation drags on. A waiter tops up the Admiral's drink. He speaks of the importance of maintaining control of the colonies in this tumultuous time, and the need for intelligence about the situation on the surface. The Dark Speckled Admiral seems to take your injections well. Good to see someone else understands the seriousness of the situation. We've been half blind since 62. I don't know if I want to die. Well, I don't really like revolutionaries uh, as a whole. I tend to follow more the masters and the, the law and order side of things. So maybe I wouldn't side with the Gregacious Engineer. But, uh... If we're going to approach the Bohemians, we need to change our outfit. Shall we... Can we dance with the... Anyone? No. Wow, we have to... We have to achieve something here. <laughs> uh, I'm assuming we can't speak to the decorated. Yeah, she's still... Okay, well I guess we are going to speak to the Bohemians. Explore the embassy. Look around back. And hide in the broom cupboard. Oh, I don't like this outfit. Change into an exquisite outfit. You try not to get anything hooked on the shelves as you change into the abundance of silks and lace. Are the Admiralty not going to be like, what the? Why are you now wearing that? Seems a little bit strange. You're suddenly just changing how you look. Okay, let's uh, approach the Bohemians. The languorous poet is reciting his latest ballad to the rapt huddle of artists. Your approach distracts him. 
he loses his place. Shining Jenny, in her most formal red habit, smiles her thanks. The Bohemians have brought their own wine, and are dispensing it liberally. A few of them are passing comment on both the decor and the attire of the other guests. They are an elaborate island of decadence in an otherwise formal affair. Let's speak with a uh, languorous poet. He is waxing lyrical on the value of dreams as an escape from one's own self. When you take the poet's attention, the young woman with whom he's speaking seizes the opportunity to escape. The poet places his empty wine glass onto a passing waiter's tray and collects a full replacement. I get the feeling this man's not a very good poet. <laughs> ingratiate, yourself, ingratiate yourself with a poem? He clearly thinks the party is beneath him. Humor him. The party is crass. The choice of artists on display is poor. The officials in attendance are wearing utterly outdated fashions. The wine could never please the palate of a refined Londoner and no accommodations have been made for guests who wish to retire from the ball to indulge in more private tastes. And the flowers, such strange and colourful shapes, are lurid assaults upon the eye. Ooh, shall we discuss indulgences? The two of you understand the enjoyments of a life well lived. You spend some time discussing intoxicating and transformative substances. Eventually the conversation turns to past pleasures. The poet stares wistfully into the distance. There are some pleasures I would give much, perhaps anything, to reclaim. He considers a passing waiter. I hear that these particular colonies enjoy sunlight of an exceptional quality. I know for a fact that there are those who would pay handsomely for a mere glimpse. If you hear of any... Here is too crowded. We could speak more closely over a dance. You've heard that certain bohemians would like to get their hands on sunlight from the surface. We speak with Shining Jenny or Sinning Jenny. Sinning, not Shining. I've been reading that wrong the whole time. <laughs> sinning Jenny is nursing a drink, apparently content mere, mere to observe the other guests. Jenny smiles broadly. And what can I do for you? I don't have the air of mystery about me again. Sinning Jenny hangs back from the larger contingent of Bohemians. She watches the crowds milling about, occasionally allowing herself a knowing smile. Let's go get ourselves. Okay, let's go back to approach the Bohemians. <laughs> A lot of backwards and forth here. Air of mystery. Oh, bugger it. I was meeting, reading it wrong. Ah, I'm so terrible at this today. I could probably find I could do that multiple times or something, but I don't know. Okay, here we are. Sitting Jenny. Discuss espionage. She's clearly reading the room. What has she learned so far? Apparently, the red-faced baronet over there has an occupational habit of proposing to any young woman of wealth who enters his eyeline. Well, the aunt sent to chaperone him has been entirely distracted by a handsome footman. The decorated ambassador, however, remains somewhat of a mystery. Anyone with information on the ambassador's romantic inclinations would earn a measure of Jenny's gratitude. How strange. Well, elucidate on the darkness within the human heart. I guess that's what we use the dramatic bloom for. Human experience is multifaceted, kaleidoscopic. Perhaps the Bohemians will be interested in your shadower, who, shadower hues. You'll need a prop to be convincing, however. You draw the dramatic bloom and let it hang limply between your fingers. You talk about the truth of human nature and how no man may escape his shadow. You contrast the flower wilting in the dark with the thriving environs of London. You elucidate on the ways in which the shadow and mystery of the Neath make it a true home for those whose characters are marked by unmentionable desires. Even the blackest of nature's blooms is too innocent to thrive here. Well, we've got the aura of mystery about ourselves, and we have gained the ambassador's attention. Hmm. The only other thing I would like to do is if I poke around back, hide in the cupboard, 
Change into the servant's uniform. We can leave the closet. Wait. Collect a plate of canapes? There are several platters in the kitchen waiting to be distributed. Uh, I mean, we can try. You collect a full plate of pastries without anyone batting an eye. Some of them are garnished with actual cherries. I have no idea what that is. You must have an air of good sense. I don't know how you get that. Okay, well, let's return to the ball. If I remember correctly, the cloakroom had somebody we could talk to. If we, here we go, ask about sunlight. But how? Ah, an air of confidence. We can ask about the, atten the attendant about revolutionaries on the surface. Oh, bugger it. Let's go back. To the ball. Ah, we can't because we're dressed as the waiter. <laughs> Not anybody we can talk to the guests. Hmm. I mean, we can wait among the guests. If anyone recognizes you, they'll make no sign of it. Perhaps those here are used to considering the staff. Considering the staff invisible. Your tray is swiftly emptied, but not before one guest decides to loudly criticize your posture. A nearby waiter rolls his eyes in commiseration. In the hallway, others offer you a swig from a hidden flask, along with a few choice words about his employers. You were well thought of by staff and guests. Okay, so if we go into the cloakroom. God damn it. I no longer have the air of mystery about me. <laughs> ah. Okay. Hang on. We're gonna, we're gonna poke around back. We're gonna hide in the cupboard. <laughs> this is seeing me walking backwards and forwards in and out of the damn cupboard. Right, let's change that outfit. Let's leave the closet. Turn to the ball. Air of confidence. Air of mystery. Let's go back to the damn cupboard. Let's change back into the servant's uniform. Turn to the ball. And duck into the cloakroom. Well, we have the air of mystery. Let's just do this one. <laughs> the staff are more at ease with other servants, and in a ca in casual conversation, the cloakroom attendance implies a tourist's interest in prisoners' honey. A sample is available. Hmm. There is a little back and forth to get each other's measure, and then, through a series of impli implications and hypotheticals, you come to an agreement. Some of the staff have smuggled sunlight down with them and might be willing to trade for a sample of her, a sample for honey. When there's a pause in the trickle of guests wandering past the cloakroom, you discreetly slide her a few drops. In return, she writes you out a cloakroom ticket in the garden buried near the statue of Ned. We can search for the sunlight sample. You know where the sample of exceptional sunlight has been deposited. There is only one statue in the garden. A man in armour, posing heroically. From the stone, it is new enough to have been carved just for this garden. Under the rhododendron bush nearby is a tin box. Inside that is a leather pouch containing a vial covered in a thick layer of beeswax. Touching the wax, you feel the unmistakable warmth of sunlight. The poet would appreciate the sample, but there might be others outside of the ball who would pay just as well for this forbidden delight. Hmm. Well, isn't this strange? So we can give that to the poet. I am 
I'm tempted to give it to the poet. I didn't want to go to the cloakroom. I wanted to go to the back, back in the broom cupboard. I don't get a feeling I'm going to, I'm going to like mistakenly side with the Bohemians. Not that there's a huge problem. I like the way the Bohemians think. I just don't like the way they dress. <laughs> there is nothing wrong with uh, a liberal attitude to the way that the uh, world is. That's for sure. Uh, let's approach the Bohemians. No. Okay. It would probably be if we danced. So, the most logical thing to try and talk to now would be... The Ambassador. No, she's still busy. Can we dance? Oh boy, we have, we have two choices. We can either dance with the Poet, because we have the Sunlight Sample, or we can dance with the Decorated Ambassador. She's watching you, as though daring to ask. I am so up for that. Let's, yeah. Sorry, poet man. I'm going with the ambassador. <laughs> you lead her to the floor, the center of attention. She steps to your rhythm. You glide with her turns. The two of you ebb and flow in a complicated, entrancing dance. As the music comes to an end, you make a final round of the floor. You twirl her, she dips you, to a round of applause. Very impressive, she whispers in your ear. Meet me in the garden. We should talk. We can dance with all of these people? Wonderful, let's just dance with everyone. But let's, um, let's carry on with the... Oh. Actually, yeah, no, let's dance with him. Let's do it now. He is not interested in a public display, but he's happy to join you when you indicate you've got something for him. You take his arm and lead him out onto the floor for a waltz. The spinning couples around you provide plenty of cover for you to palm him the sample. For the first time you see his face ease into a smile. You lean in and direct him to your source, should he require more. Ooh, an extraordinary implication. How are we going to get all of this? So many things going on in this exceptional story, it's crazy. Well, let's go to the garden and speak to the ambassador. Take a turn around the gardens with the decorated ambassador. She's waiting for you at the top of the stairs. She smiles as you approach. I'm so glad you accepted my invitation, even if you did decide to wear she shakes her head. Oh, god damn it. I'm still wearing the Bohemian outfit, aren't I? I heard interesting things about you when I asked my unofficial contacts in London. I asked others, of course, but you're the only one who's really shone this evening. She pauses to negotiate her way around a bush made almost entirely of spikes. I need someone to show me what London is really like. Someone discreet. I don't trust the official reports that reach the surface. And the colonial governments aren't the only ones who are interested. I think everyone here is occupied. We could leave now, if you're ready. The ambassador has reveal revealed a little of her purpose in the Neath. She wants you to take her around London. Let's ask her about the colonial governments. The Garden Embassy represents a number of colonies with shared interests. Why are their eyes turned to London now? She sighs. The governments of the colonies I represent are looking to the future. There are plans to federate. My father is a new governor, hence my role here. The decorated ambassador waves towards the embassy. My father and his counterparts have an important decision to make. Should they remain a part of the Commonwealth, or should they strike out on their own? Hmm. I want to be breaking up that commonwealth. Uh, ask the decorated ambassador about her less official contacts. Who else wants to know about the state of London? She considers before answering. 
Before London fell, there was an uprising of miners in the colonies. It wouldn't have mattered, but then London disappeared. Since then, the insurrectionists have made a lot of friends. They're no fools. They want information before they act. Let's return back to the ball. And... There's only a few things I can think that I haven't done. I haven't talked about... Hang on, let me put on... Go back to the broom cupboard and put on the assertive outfit. Leave the closet. Turn to the ball. Turn to the main hall. Approach the... Hang on. Let's just do both of these. Just... Admire my disposition? Mysterious disposition. Right. Approach the Admiralty. Nothing new for you here, do I? No. Mention the Gregacious Engineer's revolutionary interests. Here it is. Doing this will prevent you from assisting the Gregacious Engineer if you have not already done so. Oh, well, my constable's favour is high, too high for it to have mattered, but never mind. No rest from the wicked. The dark spe spectacled admiral eyebrows furrow. This is troubling. Thank you for telling me. The admiral removes his glasses and pinches the bridge of his nose. Traitors at every turn. The hollows under his scarred eyes are bruised from lack of sleep. Hmm. Anything new here? Nope. Can we now do anything with the... Can we dance with him? No. I don't know how we go about doing these. But either way, I think I am going to have to end the episode here. If anyone has any ideas about what I could do in order to advance this, I would be greatly appreciated. Well, I know how to advance it, going to London with the Ambassador. But is there any way of getting the other people here? Or have I locked myself out of them? But either way, please like, subscribe, let me know what you think. Your comments are greatly appreciated. And as always, I'll see you next time.